Have you ever played Kerbal Space Program and thought, you know, this just isn't realistic enough. It's just not hard enough. It's too easy. I can fly to the moon and land on a shoestring budget uh, by eyeball. You ever think of thought that? Well, occasionally I might have thought that myself. So I decided to try possibly one of the most realism associated mods. And this isn't real solar system. This is nothing to do with it being like Earth. This is more like flying like a particularly real spacecraft because there's in real space. There is no such things as spheres of influence. Um, the planets are not on rails. Everything influences everything else. If you have um, let's say the Earth and the Moon, they are rotating around a center called a barycenter that is uh, not the center of the Earth. The two are influenced by each other and by the Sun and by every other planet and everything else, all at the same time, which makes it really quite hard to calculate this thing. In fact, if you haven't heard of it before, you may have heard of um, the three-body problem or the n-body problem. Basically, if you have more than one gravitational body like the Earth, it's very, very hard to calculate uh, where everything is um, definitively. You have to go through and chunk through it time after time after time and numerically. So in order to do this in Kerbal Space Program, note that uh, there are some limits in this whole thing because your computer has to work all of this out. Regardless, we're going to be featuring a mod called Principia. Principia changes everything. So if we just go into tracking station for a second, and there's, of course, Kerbin. And we're not going to change it to real solar system. It doesn't much matter as far as flying this is concerned. It's pretty much the same in both cases. And if we zoom out, you'll see there's the moon. But you notice there's something missing. This is no lines. It's because by default, when you install Principia, the orbit lines aren't there. They're turned off because they can't really be there. Um, Patch Conics, which is the system which shows those kind of thing and the rails, um, they are all unreliable once you start getting to realistic flight. So we got to do things a little bit differently. And I just thought I'd show that. And maybe you guys can explore it yourself and comment below if you've tried it. To get started, what we're going to do is we're just going to build a craft and we're just going to use one of the default craft. Uh, here's one called the Aero Equus. I take, took a look. It's not my design. It's the one that's built into the game. And you'll see there's a bunch of different things in here, uh, different options. Uh, basically, we can uh, build... Uh, anything we like. We want to get something up into orbit, pretty much. And from orbit, then we want to... Um, we want to, want to get something capable of going to the moon. Why don't we have a look, see if there's anything a little bit more capable than that. Five and a half thousand Delta V is fine, but I'd like something to give us a little bit more... Um, not oomph, but a little bit more uh, comfort in terms of Delta V for me to be able to make mistakes, because uh, I obviously will make some mistakes. So maybe you take a look at Kerbal X or Kerbal 10. There's six and a half thousand Delta V. That seems more like it. And uh, that, that has basically got uh, what looks like, yeah, four boosters, separation, separation, uh, separation. So that's actually six boosters or seven, including the main engine. And it all looks perfectly fine all the way up as far as thrust to weight ratio. Let's actually just fly this. Sure, it'll be fine. It's one of the default um, craft. And when we go out to the launch pad, you're going to see something very, very different. See this nav ball? This does not look like that default, does it? In fact, in um, as far as uh, the oh, oh, we got everyone in this craft, <laughs> I may be about to to kill all of them, but no, never mind. Uh, what I was going to say was uh, yes. The, in, in terms of the directions that you normally used to, like prograde, retrograde, uh, normal, anti-normal, radial, anti-radial, those are all relabeled re as well. So don't assume that they are same as Kerbal Space Program uh, by default. We're going to just turn on SAS, as you might expect, and you'll see we have a bunch of stuff on here. Uh, I haven't really looked at the craft too much, but why don't we just get up into space? And to do that, you're just going to fly it like normal. That part of it is not much, any, not much different than you would normally expect. So we go and then over and over into space. We're going to try and get to like 70 to 80 kilometers, somewhat circular, and I'll see you up there. And here we are. Meg Jeb has flown us up here to get us a nice circular orbit. It's around 18 kilometers, but it doesn't really much matter. You can put it at 100 kilometers if you like. And we can take a look. You can see we have, and you can see this arc here. We'll come back to that in a second. You can see our nice orbit. Good enough. Yep, I think it's pretty good. Now, 
three of our people up here in orbit, we need to get to go past the moon. Because why not? It's a, a useful thing to do. But remember, we're dealing with realism. So we've got, what we've got to do here is use Principia to get us out there. Yes, you could try just pointing when the moon comes over the horizon and burning. That may or may not be good. Um, let's take a look at this view. You'll see the arc of the moon. That's the way the moon is traveling forwards. That's not its trail. You'll see its trail just behind it. You'll see just there, you see? Sort of a slight trail. So we know it's going to head around this way and we need to intercept it. So to do that, we need to create a flight plan. And that is part of Princubia. So in here we have this window. Um, don't worry about all of this. It looks a bit confusing to get started. First thing is just to create a flight plan. We'll bring that over here in a second. And there's some KSP pictures here so we can we turn on display patch conics again. Do not use for flight planning. It's literally warning you not to do this. And uh, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so we have a flight plan here we need to think about. We also need to think about this. This is plotting flight frame selection. Okay, um, we'll come back to that in a second. Let's do look at the flight plan first of all. So what uh, we're going to be doing is basically telling it what uh, what to do in this flight plan uh, as well. It's length, steps, don't worry about that. We're just going to add a maneuver. And here's again another complicated screen. Really, all you need to worry about is just these things here. We're going to set instant impulse, inertially fixed. And we're then going to change this maneuver and flame selection in a minute. But first of all, uh, note that tangent really means prograde. So we know if we're going to get to the moon, we want to go prograde. We want to burn when it's over the horizon, that kind of thing. So we're going to want to basically add some delta V in here. Let's just add 800 or so. Since we're 80 kilometers, uh, let's just add that amount. Okay. And you'll see there is a new line. See this line right here? This is basically where this is going to take us. It's not very helpful right now because it only shows us a little bit of that line. So we want to see how far it actually goes. So if we just move this back across here for a second, obviously the windows are quite big. I'm trying to make them large just so you can see, excuse me, see them easily on the video. But if we just bring that forwards, you'll see if I just bring this forwards. OK, it comes back around. This is our flight plan. This is where it's going to take us and the maneuvers are in the past. Don't worry about that. So if I can keep increasing this plan, you'll see it's going around again. You may not be able to see that because of YouTube, but those lines are slightly different. So what I'm then going to do is change the initial time, this thing down here. There's three sort of directions we can fire in. I'm not going to touch normal. I'm not going to touch binormal. In the case of the moon, it is equatorial with Kerbin, so we don't need to change, you know, our, our angle or anything like that. We're just going to go pro red. So we need to adjust the time. So if I just bring that around and Oh, it's in the past. We need to go forwards. Sorry. <laughs> it can't plan in the past. So we're going to bring that around and you'll see a, a weird effect that's going to happen. Well, it's not weird, but it, it may be weird if you're normally used to normal Kerbin, the uh, Kerbal Space Program. Bring that around. And well, at a certain point, you're going to start seeing this line change a little bit. Maybe hard for you to actually see. So let's just increase this a little bit more and you'll see it, be able to see it a lot more. Let me just back it up a bit. Uh, let's back it up to there. Um, yeah, that should do. I'm going to increase this to a thousand. Okay. A thousand Delta V. And that's escape velocity. Let's, let's spread 900, 900, uh, 900. Uh, okay. Maybe 850. Okay. That's, that's far enough out. And let's fast forward it again. I'm going to bring up this so we can see this line a little bit more. Around it goes and around it goes again. Uh, I can see this, but you may not be able to, but uh, that's fine. And then let's bring this around, okay? So just like that. There it goes. See that effect? This is now changing the line as it actually sweeps around. That's the effect of the moon's gravity. As I keep on bringing this around, you'll see now no longer are we going to go back in the same circle uh, from when we actually fire this 850. Remember, this isn't changing. We've just fired it once. The only difference is we're firing in a different direction because we've changed our time. This is now going to get pulled by the moon in one direction or the other, depending where we arrive relative to the moon when we get close. Well, not when we get close to it, but the closer we get, the more effect it has. So you can see here we come back around and we're further away from Kerbin, or the Earth, if you're playing a real solar system. So this is going to raise the other side of our orbit. We keep on going around. It's going to keep on doing it to a point, and then it's going to change. There it goes. Off it goes, you see. And we can probably increase that even further. 
uh, assuming I can change my actual plan length. You can see this arc here is where the moon's going to be in that time. So we can just keep on increasing it. And it can sweep around. You can see just how far out this orbit now is. So let's keep on increasing our time. You'll see kinks right there, but maybe that'll be obvious. Hopefully it is right there. It's kinking because we're getting close to the moon at that point. So let's just bring it back a little bit further. Oh, and it's changing back again. Okay, there it is. And you can see it's come back closer to the Earth. What's going on here? It's hard to see, isn't it? It's like you can't see where the moon's going to be. It's not like a typical Kerbal Space Program. The, the moon isn't shown as like a, a shadow effect in the future. You need some other guide. And this is where we come onto the maneuvering flame, frame selection. That's hard to actually say. <laughs> so if we just change it over here, right now, it's non-rotating reference frame fixing the center of Kerbin. That's just really confusing. Basically, it's based on Kerbin. What we're going to change is it's based on the moon, but we are not uh, just staying in this reference frame. We're going to change it across the reference frame, fixing the barrier center of the moon and Kerbin, the plane in which they move about the barrier center and the line between them. Okay, again, that's complicated, but let me show you. I'll just turn that off again. Uh, and we want to change it on this as well. So uh, let's just, I think it's changing on this as well. Uh, not inertial, we want reference frame. Okay, fine. Uh, turn it off. This now looks weird. <laughs> okay, uh, what's basically happened is instead of seeing this sweeping around, we've imagined that we fixed the position of Kerbin and the moon. And what you're now seeing is the orbital track, assuming that you had both of those things fixed on your screen. So you'll see it go out and come back and nothing will move apart from the ship itself. So you're seeing the future flight plan without any movement of the planets, of course, on the moon. So instead of doing as we did before, we can now just bring this down a little bit and bring that out a shot. And let's just basically change the time again. So now you're going to see what happens relative to the moon's position. Remember, this is fixed. So as this track goes along here, all these are actually moving, but you're going to see the actual location as it, it is relative to that particular planet or moon. So this is how far it actually will be from the moon in the future. It's easier to see, and that doesn't need any patch conics. You're not going to have this issue whereby you can't see what's going to happen until you change sphere of influence you can see straight away you're planning it in the future okay so we can continue doing that and you can see i can adjust this backwards and forwards and get a different kind of effect so if i go this side i'm going to basically pass in front of the moon it should, it should slow us down and if we go the other side it's going to speed us up so you can see this snaking effect around all this as we actually go around backwards and forwards. So let's bring ourselves forwards and we want it to go the other side of the moon. That's not quite enough. You can see that's not really what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is to basically spin around and come back around roughly to the same kind of orbit I'm currently in. So let's just increase that a little bit more. Okay, and you can see what effect it has. It's getting closer to the moon and it's gonna go to the other side in a second. Okay, I'm continuing to increase. You can see that's only nine delta V more. Okay, I'm going to keep on increasing. Let's bring it further up. And what's going to happen is it's going to come back towards Kerbin. And when it does, you should see it passes close by the moon as well. It's going to make this rather famous sort of figure of eight pattern. You may have seen it with, I think it's movies like Apollo 13 uh, may have shown it because I think they plotted a free return as well. I'm going to bring down the time for the flight planning just so that we can concentrate on just this little bit. There we go. Wonderful. Uh, get that going. I'll bring it back. Sorry, a little bit. There we go. So I think it was in the Apollo 13 movie anyway that, that they actually used that. And instead of doing anything else, you can see I can adjust the time forwards and that will basically change how close I am to the moon, which has a different effect on when we come back. So this is a free return. And it's free return because the moon itself is going to whip us back around uh, or basically slow us down and that, that will let us fall back towards Kerbin. Now you can adjust both of these to basically get to a point where it brings you back at almost the same altitude or even less than we're currently at. So if we continue to play around with this a little bit a bit, depends on how close I want to actually get to the moon over there. But if we then play around with this side as well, 
uh yeah we can just change that so you can see that draws further away so let's bring ourselves the other way and you'll see we're heading back towards Kerbin. there we go so depending on how close we are on either end depends just how close i want to get to the planet so i'm going to play around with this a little, little bit more until we get something well, something nice, because even once we get to this side, we can still plan a maneuver like normal and still come in uh, by just slightly adjusting our track to where we want to be. Like basically a maneuver out near the moon, which is going to be pretty good. So I've now plotted that maneuver. Well, I've plotted it a flight plan anyway. You'll see it's there just as we expect. We're going to pass in front of the moon. It's going to slingshot us back round and we're going to arrive roughly at the same kind of high we're currently at now. 866, there are more efficient ways of getting there, depending on where the moon is and all kinds of other different things like that. I'm not going to worry about it, just going to get some experience. If you're going to try it yourself, try this out. Make sure you're in Kerbin Moon Barycentric and uh, you should be easily able to plot this kind of thing. So the next thing we're going to do is basically say show on the nav ball. OK, here it is, 866.5 and burn time, etc, etc. Uh, what I actually want to do then um, is basically say or come out of the flight plan. Um, I have had problems doing this in the past because at this point, the problems I've had in the past is that this does not decrease when Mechjeb starts burning. Uh, it stays as it is, and that may be because I have the flight plan still up and it still tries to overcorrect. All that happens then is that the, <laughs> the engines never stop. They never stop burning, so things just end up out of, completely out of hand. So we'll see how close it gets. We are, however, um, we're out of uh, delta V of a current stage. We need more delta V than we currently have. So all I'm going to do here is just get rid of the stage, and that will let uh, MechJab plot it a little bit better. So we're just going to get rid of that, and uh, we are now into this next stage. Um, yes, I think so. That should be activated. Let's just make sure. Is it activated? Uh, let's just activate it. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So we now have 2,500 delta V at our fingertips and the burn time may well be off a little bit so let's just uh, increase that a little bit and just uh, slow it down yep that's going to be fine and let's just double check our flight plan again so uh, instant impulse initially fixed and show on the nav ball it's not materially any different so that's fine let's disable the flight plan and disable principia um, this is still or yeah, this is in a different um, uh, plotting frame let's just change that back to Kerbin reference frame and we'll just remove that again. And now you can see this rather wonderful effect. We have the same thing plotted, but instead of showing it fixed, it now shows it against the arc of the moon's orbit. And you'll see it just sort of comes to a halt and then comes right back down again. So that's exactly what we're sort of doing from this reference frame. All reference frames are is just a different way of fixing what the view is relative to what you're going to see. So basically, this one is just fixed to Kerbin. The other one is just fixed to the combination of the two. Uh, we're not going to worry about it, other than uh, hoping that Medjeb can actually execute the next node. Um, to do that, I may need to be a bit careful here in that that may change in the time it takes to go around the orbit, in that this maneuver is not fixed anymore. So what we may want to do is just double check when we get close to the maneuver. So it's going to be nine minutes where the maneuver is. The maneuver node is right there. And you can see this other effect going on. Oh, so what I'm going to do is uh, fast forward to, um, let's just say, uh, get us to, I don't know, a couple of minutes left. OK, so around we come. So there is, there's a couple of minutes. OK, so we're just going to re-enable it again and just double check that everything is still as we expect it to be. And uh, that is there. Yes, and if I just change, is this in still the barycentric? Yeah, let's just change that across again. Mun, reference frame, fixed. Uh, that still looks fine, so we can just go back. There we go. And uh, everything is good. So flight plan off, Principia can go away, and then we can just tell Megjeb to hopefully plan this out. Now, if there's a problem, this will still show up as 866, and they'll stay there. So I had problems with that, so we need to count for it on this side as well, 255. Uh, yeah, let me just uh, quickly do a quick sum. Okay, should the worst happen, I'll need 1,687 left in the tank. <laughs> Execute next node, and around it goes. Okay, 
and we should be arriving it says start burning 45 seconds and the burn time is 46 seconds so it's just getting to the right point it will probably fast forward because here it's mech jab yeah it'll auto warp as it needs to and uh well let's hope it then can actually take this off because if that's planned accurately then we should be able to get to the moon um let's hope if not i may have to try and cancel this uh abort node execution and get that going there it goes yeah you see this problem i don't know how to solve this if you don't if you do know how to solve this uh let me know i'm just gonna go abort turn on at that and just press this so 1687 it is and i'm gonna eyeball it because hey why wouldn't i um i can also look at it a little bit more accurately if i look in here uh delta v stats yeah we can look at that and that'll give us a better indication uh delta v stats so uh, 1687 is what I want left in the tank. And this will take it a little while. And we'll see how close I can get it by eyeball. Uh, of course, I would prefer if Megjib could actually do it. If anyone knows why that uh, maneuver node is a problem, then uh, do let me know in the comments. I'm very happy to hear about it. Um, so 16, here we come, 16, eight, oh, oh, a little bit more. I've gone a little bit too far. Oh, well, well that, that doesn't look good. That does not look good at all. <laughs> of course I'm going to fail. It's my first time trying this. So, yeah, uh, what we can actually do is, of course, try and actually uh, just get back on that by reversing, just by spinning ourselves around. Okay, and again, we're going to have problems in this mode and other things like that. So well, what I'm going to do is, can we just change the plotting frame reference and just see what the effect of this is? Uh, that is not terribly helpful, it's got to be said. Um, we are... Yeah, you can see where our flight plan's supposed to be and where we're going is slightly out from it. So if I just increase that a little bit. Yeah, we are going the right direction. We're bringing our flight plan in. And there we go. So we brought it back and 16... I use another 10 meters per second of delta V. So that works. Um, just I would like to be able to use the existing maneuver node and basically that kind of thing. So yeah, we can just decrease this history length now and we should be able to... Can we actually see that from here? I don't think we can. I think it's a different uh, different uh, slider. That's fine. So all I'm going to do now is uh, basically fast forward. And we're going to see how close we get to the moon and how good that is. So let's bring ourselves forward. And here we are heading out. We're fast forwarding. We don't really have a maneuver node out here or patch conics to basically to click on. But you can actually do that. Just have to switch patch conics back on. So if we're going to do that, I think we can do it that way. And uh, yeah, we can ignore them other than maybe be able to click on them for something. Um, can we actually even click? Well, that's the moon encounter. That's completely inaccurate with this mod. So let's just leave them off for now. And uh, we'll continue to head out. Okay, and we're about to pass behind the moon. All right, so here we are. And what's our view like out, outside of the window? Well, there's Kerbin and there's the moon. Uh, hopefully it's not too dark on YouTube. So let's just bring ourselves in and you can see we're getting closer. So let's fast forward. And of course, we, if this is a career game, we could use the usual uh, basically science mobilities. Yeah, science experiments. Collect the usual data that you would do that as normal. And uh, of course, that would um, that would get you some progress. However, this is a sandbox game just to basically have everything available to us uh, as we go. So that's us passing behind the moon without any kind of traditional maneuver nodes. And you can see that's our way back in. You can see we're going to get to uh, the, uh, the, the planet. How close are we? Uh, not too bad. However, right now, you can see it's um, it's basically showing up like we're going to continue past the planet, go around again, go around again, <laughs> around again. So just like we would do normally, we can still manually plot something. And uh, is that a curb in? Uh, in fact, yeah, let's just change what we're actually plotting this center to. So uh, relative to, say, can we say curb in? Yeah. And uh, non-rotating reference frame. Let's just leave it like that. So there you can see relative to Kerbin, what our motion is going to be like. It's going to fly all the way back out here, back up beyond the moon. In our case, though, we can just maybe just trim it a little bit and bring ourselves into the atmosphere, hopefully. 
uh, maybe I have to wait until I've already left left the moon's vicinity. So one, I just wait for that to happen. Uh, the further away from that we get, of course, the, the less influence the moon has. So let's just continue heading out. And there it goes. Off it goes. It's going to continue pull us, pull us towards it, even when it's leaving. But from here, what we should be able to do, and hopefully we'll get it right on the other side. So let's just bring ourselves around. Uh, what's our periapsis going to be like? So planned and predicted still 80 kilometers. So why don't we just basically lower that uh, by basically increasing this. Uh, where's our predicted? Predicted, there it comes. 54, 53, 45, and uh, stop right about there. So predicted curving periapsis is 29,000 meters. Is exactly what we normally want we want to be in sort of uh, just under just under 30 is fine and let's bring ourselves forward so we can get back towards Kerbin and hopefully I've got it right otherwise we're going for another trip out towards the moon <laughs> or worse yet plummeting into the atmosphere but that's not going to be a problem is it because nope we are perfectly confident in Principia so in we come and let's take a look from outside the map this is looking pretty good We've got plenty of fuel, which we no longer need. And of course, we've got separators and parachutes. So Incom are intrepid kerbals, ready to head back into the atmosphere. And in we come. So you can see, hopefully, uh, we're getting a lot closer. Let's make sure that we are going to head into the atmosphere. It looks like I'm going to miss. And did I get that wrong? That really does look like I'm going to miss. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to go for another trip. Why was that off? Was I just predicted? Predicted in what time frame? Is that when I go out again? Uh, yeah, I may need to get some more practice of this. Anyway, uh, I guess we can still head back into the atmosphere. We can try and burn right now. Of course, that wouldn't be terribly effective because we're altering this side of the orbit all the way out of here. Well, give me a minute to actually readjust that uh, properly when we uh, when we come back. So I'm going to ignore those Ape, uh, uh, Apo and Periapsis markers. I'm going to just go with our height here. This will change depending on various things, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to bring ourselves forward and we're going to see how close this is. So 26,500 is perfectly fine too. And we're going to fast forward until we get a lot closer to the planet. Okay, so in we come. And how close are we going to be now? <laughs> Am I coming in and looking a lot better? Uh, well, we'll see. 500. Uh, we're going to place ourselves backwards as we normally would. Retrograde or the equivalent. And let's just bring ourselves in. Am I going to miss again? Looking like I'm going to miss again, doesn't it? Or maybe not. Maybe not. Ooh. Wait a second. We're getting closer. Is this actually accurate? Looking like it is. So what we're going to do now is pretty much get rid of our engines as we normally would. So we're just going to tilt ourselves off. Uh, we're going to separate, or hopefully separate. There we go. And now our pod is uh, basically unsteerable. Oh, well, not, we can change our attitude. We just can't really use any engines, uh, aside from any emergency engines that we might have on board. But this is not SpaceX craft, so uh, looks like we're heading into the atmosphere for hopefully a normal sort of uh, normal sort of re-entry without any maneuver nodes. Fine, let's see how well it goes. Let's fast forward and see our wonderful service module sort of burning up in the atmosphere. There's probably going to be some explosions in a minute or two, so if you hear them, don't worry, it's not Minecraft. It's that one over there. As long as that doesn't fly ahead of us and come back and hit us, that's not that's going to be maybe one heck of a, a shot if uh, we could do that. No, nope, we can't hear any explosions. That's fine. 30,000. And coming in as normal. Quite safely. We could even turn off SCS at this point. And I've got you forwards to heading towards the desert. And we should be slowing down just about enough to be able to deploy the parachutes, which we are going to do. There's our parachute. And that should slow us down, just like any other game of Kerbal Space Program. So there's obviously a lot of things I still need to figure out. Uh, in particular, what all the different orbital uh, plots that you see are and how they relate to each other. 
If anyone uh, is an expert in that, feel free to put a guide down below. I have a look at the wiki for this, but unfortunately the screenshots are too small to be able to see anything. So I thought, let's try recording an episode. Let's see how far we get. And hopefully this is a much higher quality version. You can see what I'm seeing and hopefully that is going to be quite useful. Um, so there is a few things I would like to be able to uh, use if this were, you know, like an ongoing thing. One is I want to be able to use those maneuver nodes because that will let me use MechJed. That may be a MechJed problem or it may be a Principia problem. Either way, we can recover the vessel. I obviously would like to look at those orbital pl uh, plot lines a little bit better and to be able to see uh, ideally on them the Apo and Perry for any particular pass. And that doesn't appear to be the case. Uh, it doesn't show them up very well. Uh, and I can't really do that. Uh, unless that is in something like orbit analysis or flight plan. I haven't seen it there, but maybe I just missed it. Anyone who's uh, better, uh, more of an expert than I am, feel free to let me know there. Otherwise, uh, we should be good to go. We've got basically a complete, um, a complete journey. We haven't died, haven't got any problems. And we've got Principia. Now, this isn't just... Uh, basically confined to realistic flight for um, for our ship. It's also com uh, the same for all of the planets. And I do mean all of the planets. So if we continue going outwards, uh, yep, every planet is modeled and is all influencing each other as we go forward in time. So if we go across the Jewel, and Jewel has lots of planets, you can see them all there, and they are all orbiting and they're all influencing each other. Um, Older versions did have a problem where one of the, I forget which one it was, uh, one of these uh, moons is really massive and uh, it was getting kicked out by by Jules' gravity and heads off into the outer solar system and apparently crashed the game uh, because the planet got kicked into uh, basically interstellar space. But uh, apparently that's been fixed now, at least on short time scales. So yeah, um, this is why in the real solar system, of course, the planets that we know of are on nice stable orbits. Uh, you can't just put planets anywhere you like and expect them to continue to orbit in the sun because they will interact with each other. It's one of the reasons why, um, uh, for example, you can't have uh, another Earth on the other side of the sun, if I remember rightly, uh, in that that's one of the Lagrange points and it's not a stable Lagrange point. Uh, or it's close to one of the Lagrange points, I think. Um, it's not stable. Uh, you can't have it there for forever, I think. So, yeah, there are certain orbits that are just not available. Uh, in real life. So yeah, it's a pretty good game. And of course, we have this great mod on top of it. What do you guys think? Have you played with it before? Have you got any sort of comments about it? Put them down in the comments below. And of course, if you like this video, just like other ones in the series, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, click on the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next episode. Well, maybe not for some more Kerbal Space Program, but I just thought I'd show off the mod. Thanks a lot for watching as always, guys. We'll see you next time.